it's part 58 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss raise view syntax. This is continuation to part 57, so please watch part 57 before proceeding. To comment something in raise views, we use this syntax. So, at symbol and asterisk indicates the beginning of a comment, and then you can have, you know, as many lines as you want in your comment. It can be a single line comment or a multi line comment. And then to end a comment, we use asterisk and at symbol. Let's look at that in action. So this is my comment. Now, I, you know, at the moment it is treated as literal text. So if we refresh this view, it's simply going to print that text there. But our intention here is to actually treat that as a comment. So to indicate the beginning of a comment, we use at symbol and asterisk. And then end of the comment, asterisk and at symbol. Okay, so we can also use this icon right here to comment and uncomment. So I select, uh, you know, the the lines that I want to comment or uncomment, and then I can click on this icon to uncomment, and then click on this icon to comment it. Or we can use this keyboard shortcuts: Control K, Control C to comment, Control K, Control U to uncomment. So now since this is commented, if we save it and if we refresh our view, nothing will be printed there. All right. Now, there may be scenarios you know, where we want to transition between C-sharp expressions and literal text. And in those cases, we don't have to do anything special. Razor views are smart enough to transition between C-sharp expressions and literal text without we having to do anything. Let's understand that with an example. Now, here you can see that we have three variables of type integer, obviously day, month, and year, which are holding the respective day and month and year numbers. Now, let's say using these variables, I want to print the date in this format. So we want this literal text, date is, and then we want to spit out the values that are present in these variables, day, month, and year. And in between day, month, and year, we want that literal text again, you know, that dash there, you know, date and month separators. Okay, so to achieve that, notice what we are doing. So here, first of all, we have some literal text, date is, and then we want the value out of this variable. So we are using the C-sharp expression at day. And then again, we want that literal text. So look at that, we are not doing anything special there. Okay, we're just putting that you know, dash there. And then again, to retrieve the value out of month variable, we are simply saying at month and then our literal text, which is dash and then at year. And then we'll get the output that we ex expect. So let's quickly look at that in action. So at and then we want our variable int day, let's say 31 and let's say int month, which is going to be 12 and end year, let's say 2012. And we want to print, you know, date is. So that's literal text. And we want to print day first. So we're going to use at day. And then we want dash. And then at month. And then another dash. And then at year. So save everything. And let's refresh our view. We should get the date in the format that we expect. So date is, you know, day, month, and year. And then this explicit code nugget is extremely useful, especially when we want to do something dynamically. Now let's understand this example. So I have these five images. Notes the name of the images, you know, one dot PNG, two dot PNG, three dot PNG, four and five. Okay, so we have five images. Okay, and then we want to display them in a razor view. And then we want the output to be like this. So we want to display all the five images. So I have them already in this directory, in the root directory of our MVC web application project. So within the images folder, all the five images are there. Okay, so now we have to build the image tag dynamically. Okay, so what we are doing here, notice that we are using a for loop from one to five because the names of the images are 1.png, 2.png, 3.png, until 5.png, okay? So we are using a for loop to loop through, you know, until five. And then look at that, we are setting, we are using an image tag, okay? And then obviously we need to specify the source attribute for the image tag. So we need to tell it where the image is coming from. So the source is going to be within the images folder. 
So we are using the tilde symbol there. Tilde indicates the root directory. The root directory is MVC demo. So within the root directory, we have images folder. So that's the literal text, tilde for slash image. So that's the path. Okay, literally the text that we are typing there. And then within images, so we have another forward slash there. And then we have this i variable, which is going to carry the numbers 1 to 5. Okay, so first time it loops through, it has to be 1.png. So 1. Okay, so to retrieve the value out of that variable, we are using that explicit code nugget here. So at open the bracket and then variable i and then the close the bracket so this is going to take the value out of that variable and then to that it is going to concatenate dot png because the image extension is dot png okay so this code nugget explicit code nugget here is extremely useful to dynamically determine the source attribute of our image tag so this you know code here is going to generate this HTML for us. So since we are looping through five times, you know, there will be five image tags generated and look at the source attribute, you know, MVC demo for slash images, you know, for slash one dot PNG, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So let's actually look at that in action. So we already have the images that we need. So we're going to make use of the for loop. So for int i is equal to one, i less than or equal to five i plus plus and we want image tag there so image we need to specify the source attribute so source is going to be tell which indicates the root directory forward slash that's present in our images folder and forward slash so we need the name of the image and the name of the image is going to be determined by this variable so if I simply say at i and dot png Okay, so what it is going to do here is it's going to look for a property called PNG on that I. But do we have that variable? No, we don't. We actually want to concatenate. Our intention here is to concatenate this one with whatever value that is present in I. If it is 1 in the variable I, then we want that to be 1.png. But then what it is doing here is it is trying to look for a property called PNJ on that variable i. Okay, so that's not what we want. We want to concatenate the value with that dot PNJ. So that's it. So let's save it and let's refresh this view. And we should say all the five images there. And when we right click on view page source, notice that the image tags are generated as expected. And we know that this at symbol is used as code delimiter in Razor views. It has got special meaning. Okay. But however, Razor is smart enough to recognize the format of internet email address and not to treat that at symbol in that email address as a code delimiter. For example, let's say my requirement is I want to print a message like this. This is my email address. And then my email address, I want that to be displayed in bold. Okay. Now notice that obviously it's, you know, an email address should have an at symbol in it. Okay. But then when we use that statement inside a razor view, we know that at symbol has got special meaning. It's used, you know, as a code delimiter to switch between HTML and C sharp. But then if we use that as part of an internet email address, RazorView is smart enough to not treat that as a code delimiter, but to treat that as simply a printable character. Okay, let's actually look at that in action. So when I say this is my email address, and then let's put an HTML break. And then when I say codevenkert at gmail.com, Look at that, I don't get any errors. So I simply save it and then I refresh this view and it displays that email address there. So Razor View is pretty smart there to identify that it's an email address and not to treat that symbol as code delimiter anymore. But then there are certain scenarios where Razor View is not smart enough to treat that as a printable character when we want to treat it as a printable character. For example, let's say I want to print a statement like this. I will meet you at office. Okay. So how do we do that? We simply write it like this. I will meet you at 
office. Okay, but then at this point here, laser view is going to treat that as a code delimiter, and then when we navigate to the view, we get an exception. You know, there will be a compilation error. Okay, so our intention here is to actually treat that as a printable character, meaning we want to escape that and then you know print that symbol there. So what is the escape sequence character for the at symbol? Another at symbol. So you simply precede that with another at symbol and then it will be treated as a regular printable character and not as a code delimiter character. So save it, refresh your view and we get the output that we expect. There we go. I'll meet you at office. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.